So he was talking a little bit about baseball cards. And I know baseball cards are hot right now because Gary Vee has been really pumping baseball cards and talking about baseball cards all the time. And um, so baseball cards are like a collector's item. They have, they have value. They've, they appreciate over time. Um, it's, you know, like many, many goods of that kind. Um, now, one thing that's a common problem for people who are buying, selling, and trading baseball cards is the actual receiving of the, you know, you receive a shipment, you have to open it up, you hope it's not damaged, you have to verify that it's real. And then if you sell it, you got to sort of go through that whole shipping process right back to the other person, hope that nothing goes wrong in the process. And so for people who are collecting these as a sort of financial asset in some ways, um, and they don't, they're not like sitting there trying to carry them with them to school or something like that. You don't need the physical card. He was saying, why is there not sort of a central repository where you can like a, you like, buy, a, like a like a safety deposit a, a fort knox for for the baseball cards where basically you buy and sell it online but it never moves it just sort of exchanges ownership but it's all stored in this central vault where it's cooled properly so they don't degrade they're all verified by a professional there who's centrally located you don't have to deal with any of the shipping costs or, or potential issues there um so i think that should be the headline the fort knox of baseball cards yeah, so I think it's a pretty clever idea and obviously could extend to sneakers, could extend to art, could extend to other things. Maybe there's something that, like this that exists. I don't do baseball cards or art. Do you dabble with any of this stuff? Um, I got into shoes after I learned about them. We wrote about it on Trends about a year ago, and I've since gotten into them. Yeah, but not to the point of wanting to make money off of it, but to the point of like spending $300 on a pair. But I did do research on this, and it seems as though there's not a great solution. So... Jack's on to something. We wrote about this actually. Um, Heritage Auction House. What I would do if I wanted to create this, which I actually think this is a wonderful idea. I don't, I don't, I certainly don't have time, so I'm not going to, but this is a great idea. And what I would maybe do is contact a lot of the auction houses and be like, what are you guys doing now? Right. What, what, why can't this work? And, or collectors, uh, you know, high end collectors, people who have a portfolio of these things. Um, because I think it is a very small, it's a small, it's a niche community, obviously. It's a small number of people. I don't think it's as people. niche as you think. Well, just, just that's like a, it depends on your reference point, right? So it's like in all of society, yeah, it's super niche. But in term, like how many people do you think are actively investing in or trading baseball cards, right? Like is it in the tens of Billions thousands, of hundreds of thousands? Worth. Billions but of dollars. People, I'm, I'm saying like potential customers you have to convince to use your service. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Okay. I'm, that's interesting. Low, I, I, would bet it's, I would bet it's lower. Uh, um, like, and the reason why is like for, there's always a long tail of really casual people, but of people who actively do it and have like some, you know, above, let's call it $250 worth of value um, locked in it. You know, like Shopify has like 50,000 ish, or it did a, a two years ago when I looked at this, maybe it's a hundred thousand now power sellers. Uh, Etsy sort of in that same range. Twitch has like in the 50,000 ish, uh, partners. Sorry, um, so- I don't think there's a hundred thousand sellers. I think that there's a hundred thousand people who are interested in transacting in this market. Right, right. And so, um, so I think you could get. I think what my point is that the kind of circle of influence is pretty tight here, where the number of people you would need to convince and that you could go learn from to see if this is a real problem is kind of small, and that's great. It's like kind of like online poker, where you just go get these fifteen pros to do something, and now they sway the rest of the casual community with them as like, oh yeah, that's the best practice. That's how we do things now. 